What's going on ladies and gentlemen? I figured I needed to do a follow-up video just uh, based off of some of the responses to the last video that I uploaded regarding the tune and being frustrated and just clear the air, update. Anyways, I hope you guys had a wonderful holiday. Um, New Year's is next and then we'll probably wind up getting back to normal-ish as long as another V word doesn't come out. There was a couple things that I was concerned about. Basically, I got a AEM Uego X-Series wideband with the OBD pass-through to verify my air fuel ratios. There was uh, a subscriber, Chris, huge shout out. Thank you very much, appreciate it. But Chris has HP tuners on his laptop and he's local. So we were able to hook up HP tuners to the Jeep verify that the tune was in fact unlocked and we went in and looked at some of the 3d tables just to make sure that nothing looked malicious or wonky essentially the only thing that i can complain about regarding my experience with this previous shop right now is the fact that it took as long as it did the annoying part to me was the fact that they kept making promises on time frames and those time frames kept getting blown by a significant amount of time a tune should not take three months but that's all we're gonna say about that so the AEM wideband um, I ordered that on Amazon same day shipping it it had I ordered it first thing in the morning it had arrived by the time I got home from work then and that was on a Friday so the wideband sensor needs to be welded into the exhaust the exhaust is stainless steel you cannot or you can weld mild steel to stainless steel, but it's not suggested. So the guys over at 485 Industries over in Denver actually had a stainless steel bung in stock and were able to weld it in like 15 minutes. They charged me $50. The welds look amazing, especially when you're considering the fact that you are drilling holes in uh, brand new Cook's exhaust. So... That was a huge breath of fresh air. I called I called him, the guy's name's Nick. I believe he's the owner. I called Nick. He told me that he had the part that I needed in stock. Um, he also told me his availability was immediate. I could bring it in like essentially right now. His pricing was fair, really fair, $50 to have stainless steel welded. And the turnaround time was less than an hour. Essentially from deciding that I was going to get the wideband to having it installed and functional was a little over a 24 hour time frame and that's just like that was just a huge relief when it you know when you think about the things that we've gone through with building the Jeep up to this point the waiting game is just so annoying you feel helpless but it's all back together everything looks good timing looks good fuel tables look all right the uh, AFRs, whether you read it in Lambda or uh, AFR, which is the air fuel ratio, is safe, well within the safe range, does exactly what it needs to do. So we can't really uh, complain about the functionality of it. Um, I will admit that I was a little bit neurotic, but it's my baby, you know? I don't like being uh, messed around with when it comes to that kind of stuff. So, um, side note. For Christmas, we got a part that Megan was so kind to get for me. But we've got some B Woody front and rear sway bar end links. Uh, these end links are supposed to be a huge upgrade from the factory end links. Uh, I believe the factory end links only have about a uh, quarter inch of diameter on the uh, end link itself. Come on, focus. And these ones, I believe, are three quarter inch, so triple the size. And they're supposed to really tighten up the suspension on the SRT. Which I'm super, which I'm super excited about. Um, you know, when you are modifying a vehicle of this age, it's a 2014 with 115,000 miles. When you're modifying a vehicle that has that many miles and is that old, not saying it's old, more high mileage than anything, you're gonna start having to replace 
items that you wouldn't normally think about like sway bar end links bushings things of that nature just like stuff's gonna go wrong and honestly i would rather wait to replace it until it goes wrong than have a 5,000 mile track hawk that i'm replacing brand new components with more brand new components that just seems kind of wasteful i don't know that's just my justification for not buying a track hawk anyways um the tuning situation has been figured out i've contacted a couple of tuners that if i need in the future we can go with no plans of getting anything tuned at the moment we're just trying to uh, get back on our feet from having a baby and christmas so um yeah i will keep you guys updated uh if anything changes between now and the time that we get the uh the end links installed i'll definitely let you know but until the next video i hope you guys had a happy holidays wishing you an early happy new year and i probably won't see you guys until next year but maybe i will if not stay safe enjoy the new year don't drink and drive and uh i'm out peace